Um, all right, welcome to today's CUGC Connect webinar. I'm Stephanie Boozer with CUGC HQ, and I'm happy to welcome you to our session today on Star Wars Day. And I realized after I got this started, I should have had a, a really cool Star Wars background. I guess I'm not, I'm not <laughs> a true fan. <laughs> I am a true fan. I just didn't think about it ahead of time. <laughs> All right, so we're going to be talking with Liquidware about our application strategy and lots of cool um, solutions that they have for us. Um, but before we get into that, just want to share with you, we have a lot of cool Excel events coming up. So our next one is actually next week in Chicago, Great Lakes Excel. Um, definitely, if you're in the Chicago area and you haven't registered, we'd love to see you out there. I'll be there. I think, Johnny, you'll be there. Um, Jason? Are Not, you? No, but we will be there. We're, we're a proud <laughs> sponsor of that one. Yep. Yep. Um, we also have one coming up in Denmark. Um, I think actually registration might be full for that, but there may be a waiting list. Um, and then New York and uh, virtual Excel in the middle of the summer. So I'll put a link in the chat in just a little bit uh, so you can get more details on all of those. Um, also, just to let you know, our uh, we've started our Slack and Discord channels, and we definitely welcome you to join. You can join either or both. The channels are bridged, so you won't miss anything um, if you just stick to one. Um, by default, you'll come into the general channels, but we also have private channels for each of our local groups. So once you join, you can fill out a form to request to join your local group and we can add you add you there so that you can communicate with all your, your CUGC friends. <laughs> all right, and uh, just a couple of details. We are recording today's session. You'll get a link to that recording tomorrow in an email. So be on the lookout for that. Um, we'd love to have you say hello in the chat. Um, let us know where you're joining us from today. And then also, if you have questions today, please type those in the Q&A panel. We're going to get to as many questions as we can and uh, love to answer those for you live today. All right, so here we are. We have Jason E. Smith. He is the VP of Product Marketing and Alliances at Liquidware. Hello, Jason. Hey, nice well, to meet you. I'm glad to be here. We're always pleased to be a sponsor of CUGC. Yep, you guys have been with us since the beginning, so true friends. Oh, that's right. <laughs> and then we also have Johnny Ma with us today. Johnny is a Citrix technology advocate. He is a Colorado CUGC leader, and he also happens to work for Liquidware, but he's wearing his community hat today and is gonna help us uh, keep an eye on all your questions and facilitate the conversation and discussion around all of the really amazing questions that you guys are going to ask today. I think you're probably going to try to stump Jason, maybe. <laughs> I don't know if he can be stumped. <laughs> I'll make something up. <laughs> All right. That's it for me for now. So Jason, you are free to take over the screen and uh, get going. Thanks. Let me just shift right on over to a uh, slide deck that has something Star Wars on it. So I got you covered. We're going to give away this uh, Mandalorian Falcon, aren't we? Lego set today, and we'll do that at the end. And uh, there'll be a there'll be a drawing at the end, and Stephanie will remind us of that. Uh, I was so pleased to see that we that we were scheduled for May the fourth, and we ran with it. May the fourth be with your application strategy. By the way, we'll be doing that Excel in uh, New York City that Stephanie spoke about, and um, we'll we'll be a sponsor there as well. And for some VIP Citrix accounts, if you were interested in going to a New York Yankees game later that evening, reach out to us uh, for a chance to attend that too. We've got some limited seats for a, for a VIP suite. And if you qualify, we'll get you into that too. It happens to be the same day, but that evening. So today we're gonna to be talking about application strategy, application methodology. <clears throat> and, uh, this is a brand new slide deck. So if you think you've seen a liquid wear presentation before, this one's new. And uh, it is a uh, refreshing approach, I believe, when you uh, hear about application strategy, because we're gonna take you through a suggested methodology. Uh, I always level set every presentation I do by telling you just a little bit about liquid wear, not about the history and all that. And I hope most people sort of know who we are in this space by now, but digital workspace management is 
is is the space that we put ourselves into and that we manage any Windows environment, not just Citrix, but any way that you have it. So you may have a Citrix um, enterprise or deployment as part of your workspace uh, enterprise. We can also help manage the other machines too. And you could rapidly onboard and offboard on the Citrix platforms and any other platform too. So some of our customers during, during, uh, during COVID a couple of years ago, they rapidly were able to scale up their Citrix seats, send a lot of people to work from home. And because they, we already managed their physical desktops, they didn't skip a beat. They went home on a Friday, logged on to a Citrix uh, session on a Monday and their profile, their applications, and they knew their digital experience on the background followed them and they were able to be productive on day one compared when you compare that to some of the other organizations that had to shut down for a month or more because they didn't have a plan but you have business continuity from us so user environment management with profile unity goes beyond just the profile we don't just make a profile stick we manage that profile on a granular basis so it'll go across with multiple versions of windows so switch from windows 10 to 11 even we still support seven if you have paid for uh, extra support from that from Microsoft. We've got you covered there too. And also all the Windows Server versions too. So um, in CVAD, if you're running the multi-session version with multi-session 10 or 11 and all that, that same user can log off, log on to any of those and their profile follows them. Not just the profile, but all the parts that make their entire profile experience. Their settings on a context-aware basis, mapping drives, printers, and all those things that help uh, major healthcare and education and, and big deployments for Citrix run smoothly. We handle all that for user environment management, not just the profile. Um, application portability through FlexApp. We're going to be talking a lot about this today, and it's the way to make an application stick uh, in a non-persistent environment, but now with new methods that we have and new features we have, we actually have portability for that where you can take your apps on the go and you can even deploy them using Microsoft in tune without using anything from us. We've got so much innovation in there, more I would authoritatively say over anybody else in the industry. Uh, we have people copying us all the time. For example, we've had, um, we've had our click to layer apps, apps on demand. We've had that for five to six years. And now you're seeing other people start to imitate it in the industry. Uh, we've got other other things that people are starting to try to knock off. That's okay because we're way out front and we're doing some things. We've got some other things in the pipeline that others haven't thought of that are being demanded. So we're going to talk a lot about, about that. We're going to talk about um, our digital experience monitoring and how it can help you in your application strategy and that stratosphere UX that can monitor in the end. It can support uh, thin client devices like Stratadesk, iGel, uh, anything like that. So we have an agent that'll run on those machines, but we have an agent that run on the Citrix session and maybe on a physical PC. It will tell you the comprehensive digital experience across all of those. So you can know that end to end user experience. So application strategy, may the fourth be with it. Um, application delivery and the problem. Now we've got a poll question in just a minute. We're going to ask you about this, but just to level set us, the problem with application delivery, especially when you're managing things on a, on a base image level is that you end up with a ton of base images. You end up with many silos or uh, instances of a base image for specific use cases, the accounting department, the HR department, the marketing department, and so on and so on. Then you have to scale those because you have to have hundreds of users logged onto those and you have to replicate those. And then anytime you have an update, then it just snowballs and becomes a major problem. And so I want to uh, Stephanie, if you got that poll question ready at any time, you can ask it. It's, it's how many base images do you have in your Citrix environment today? And hopefully one of these will fit um, A, B, C, or D there. One, two to five, six to 15, or 16 or more. And the way these polls work usually is that we leave them open and they'll be on the screen until you vote. So hurry up and vote so we can go on with the webinar. Click on one of those. That's the right answer for your organization. And it would be interesting to see what that is, how big the problem is among this community of, of people watching us today. All right, I see a clear winner. So I'm going to in, in the poll and I'm going to share the results for you. There you go. You see that, Jason? Yeah, two to five wins, six to 15, but 16 or more. If you couple the six to 15, 16 or more, it's, it's also clear that uh, on this call, two to five wins, but six or more, if we looked at it that way, probably comes up to at least that level. 
um, or close to it. So that's a lot of base images. So you know and understand and you live that problem daily. Johnny, is that something that you lived when you were doing implementations out in the world, even before you joined Liquidware? Yes, yes, all the time. And, you know, there's a question that popped up in the chat as well, talking about persistent machines, right? I've done a lot of work in the world, flipping those persistent machines into non-persistent machines to make that image madness, sprawl, whatever you like to call it, minimized as possible. Yep. So you were involved with, with tons of accounts. You, you did work for Alchemy and before, right? Yes. I worked for many, many resellers doing new deployment, upgrade deployment, consolidation, rebuilds, left, right, front, and back. It's all good. So it's a problem we all we all know firsthand, or I know it secondhand because I've not been out in the real wild, but uh, I do talk to customers on an ongoing basis and know that this is a problem that really everybody can relate to. And what's our goal? Our goal is single base image, one single base image. And I wonder how many people, I wish we had a poll question that said, how many people out, laughed out loud right now? Is that even feasible, <laughs> right? So um, it's feasible. Uh, we were at the EUC master's retreat and Joe Shank, a lot of you know him from the community and CUGC, he even gave a case study and it was unexpected to me that he had leveraged some of our stuff to get to this for a healthcare customer, a single base image where apps are dynamically assigned. And uh, they brought in either user login at boot time or on a context aware basis. Some of them come in from SaaS apps and other things. But this is the goal that I think that a lot of organizations would strive for if they knew it was possible. And I can tell you it is possible. We're helping very large organizations get at least to fewer base images, maybe not to a single base image. We have helped organizations get to a single base image as evidenced by what Joe Shank, uh, he presented at uh, the EUC master's retreat that was just about a month ago. So uh, how do we get there? Uh, it's very apparent to me that um, we can talk about how FlexApp might help solve this from an application attachment level, but how do we get to single base management? So this is a good time for that second poll question, I think, Stephanie, if I remember correctly. A lot of times I blow past these. I'm doing great today. We only have two of these. Do you have a documented application strategy process in your organization today? And by that, do you like do some kind of evaluation and then say, well, maybe this one should go here or there? Or is, is it a documented process? Do you have one today? And I guess I could ask, could it be better? Could you have a better one today? So with that fuzzy type of an answer, answer how you will. It's just one, one little click you have to do there so we can get on with the presentation and then we won't ask you your opinion or your questions on anything else. We'll, we'll jump forward and we'll find out who wins that Mandalorian Falcon later. Let's see, we got, well, most people have responded. So I'll give you five, four, <laughs> three, two, one. Okay. Um, close here. I'll let you see. Ah, uh, surprises me a bit. Um, because after we started to ask it, you know, I, I thought, well, certainly people, most people might have that. So 58% of people say no, and I bet a bunch of those yeses think that it could be better. Um, but maybe the yeses haven't figured out. That means they're already a liquidware customer, maybe. No, nah, probably not, but could be. Um, how do you get there? What do the what what do the signs say? And then I, I guess you go down this path right down the middle. It looks like you get there. After I use this graphic, I was thinking, well, actually, kind of straight way there. Um, there was a session at that EUC Masters Retreat that I would love to share with you. So we're going to look at what the experts said, and this was an impressive group. Not just because that I was sitting up there on one of those stools, but because Johnny Ma, he was he was he's so important. He didn't get a stool. You can see him standing up there in the yellow shirt. Um, but we've got. Uh, VMware themselves up there without volumes on the far right. We've got Rory from Numicent. We've got myself. We've got Tim Mangan, some call the father of application virtualization in that red shirt. Tim uh, gives lots of uh, classes and also tips and one-on-ones and helps organizations deploy Microsoft App V. And now he's shifted some of that work over to MSIX which he says, his words, not mine, they're compatible, fully compatible to somewhere around 40%, 30, 40% of applications today. So it's not a clear solution going forward um, yet, but uh, 
then you've got Johnny standing there, Jim Moyle with Microsoft, and you've got Remo 3 out there, and uh, a portal or uh, uh, application access company, Liquid, is also on that panel. But a room full of, and, and you can't, there's actually experts in the audience out here. So the EUC Master's Retreat, and Stephanie was there at the very beginning of it too, because there was a CUGC in Arizona that was planned right up, up to, to the starting hours of the EUC Master's Retreat. This group is an influent is, is a group of influencers like you've never seen. It's the first one I'd been to. Steve Greenberg's been doing it for years, but this session was on application deployment. So you're seeing first time that the takeaway from the session, if we could have summarized, we ran out of time. But if I could have summarized for the group, this is how I would have put it together. And that's what you're seeing today about application strategy. So it's not just according to liquidware, but it's according to many people on this panel. Um, at least I'm going to say it's according to most of them because this was the consensus of the room that you first you really need to start out by assessing and know what you got it sounds it sounds obvious but you need to know what you have in use today and you need to know the total number of applications out there you need to know as part of that application complexity of those applications out there before you start to think about how to deliver your apps and which one should be in the image and which one should be a different way so you categorize the three different types Tim Mangan said this, not me. Uh, you probably three different technologies. One, install it in the base image. It's going to work always, but that doesn't help with base image sprawl. So you want as few as possible to do that. Maybe Microsoft Office because it's complex, but everybody needs it. Sometimes it gets updated with the OS as well, right? So it's a good, easy one to put in the base image. Um, and then you want to attach as many as you can, application layering, have the lightest footprint and highest compatibility that you can. And we do that with FlexApp. Uh, there's some couple other technologies that do it, but we do that with FlexApp. And lastly, there's a few use cases out there. You might still want to isolate applications because they need some isolation to where app A can't see app B or the OS or to move forward beyond the OS. And then you need something like app V um, and MSIX is starting to serve some of those use cases too with some isolation. So three types there that you need to get to this strategy of, of a single base image if you can get there. Then you need to prepare. You need to figure out how quickly you can package those applications, automate that process if possible, and then you've got to test that. And some people are stepping in the gap to help with the testing, so it's not all manual. Um, Remo 3 is starting to do that. Application readiness is doing that. And then obviously deploy. And you don't want to be restricted on your deployment mechanisms. You want to be to be able to deploy through even Citrix tools, Microsoft Intune if you can, if you can, or if you want advanced deployment to be able to use solutions uh, like those from Avanti or to use um, those from Liquidware with Profile Unity does application management. So assess, prepare, and deploy. You need to go through these three steps. It was obvious, and there was many customers in the room that seemed to agree in that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna shift into uh, that methodology today and take us through those those slides. Um, and, and first you want to assess and you'll see this on the right to keep us to keep track here you'll see on the far right of this slide it says assess right so we're in the assessment phase. Our stratosphere solution is purpose built to be a monitoring solution but it can be fused with a short term license. And if you're looking at our flex app solution we'll be glad to introduce you to Stratos stratosphere to help you do that step to know how many total applications you have in uh, total and then how many are actually in use. This customer that we looked at in this report that we fed into Power BI had uh, 820 applications out there total, 152 were in use. So obviously that gives you your short list, right? The ones that are in use is the ones you wanna focus on. And then, then you wanna decide how complex those applications are. But look, you can disregard a lot of apps right out of the gate. So you, an application strategy helps you know a starting point, and this is a great starting point to assess. Second part of assessing, to figure out the complexity of those applications and how they're delivered. This is another thing Stratosphere can help you with. By the way, um, companies like uh, Application Readiness can look at stuff like this, and I think Remo3 can look at complexity too, especially with some of the testing they're doing, but this looks at it in a different way. So Stratosphere can be used here too to look at application complexity. You know, how many services does it have? And, and how many device drivers does it have? How many shell extensions does it provide DCOM? And then you assign it a complexity rating. And then you start to think about if you've got something highly complex or a kernel mode driver or something like that, maybe, maybe that's a candidate for the, uh, for the base image um, if it can't be attached. And there's a high probability that it can be attached 
with our portability engine of FlexApp. So it can stay out of the base image of that. But you've got this information to start off of, I mean, to go from, and then you can also think about how that fits into your strategy for, uh, for possible isolation too, if that's even needed. Because there's fewer use cases of isolation as we go along. Many of us know AppV is almost end of life too. So um, there's, there's new methods approaching like uh, MSIX to take care of those. So then still in the assessment phase, keeping track over here on the right, the right where you see the blue in my slide, we're assessing. We're gonna to start to assess these applications and categorize them into the types of apps they are. Ideally, you want to keep them out of the base image as much as possible, and you want them running native. So you wanna use a technology like our Flex app that does that. I'll show you why that, why that works like that in a moment, but you'll have a high degree compatibility of Flex apps probably 90 plus percent of your apps are gonna be able to stay out of that base image. And that's gonna get you way down in the number of base images that you're gonna have on a departmental basis. And then you're gonna have a few that you could put in the bay, in the image and you may, you may, may not have something that still needs to be isolated. So there's three types of categorizations you wanna make there and you wanna literally sort that out on where you are. You may want to run them through Flex app um, and do the testing first and then fall back to these. But we're still in the assessment phase. It starts to mix over to the uh, to the to the part where you're starting to prepare. All right, and prepare for what you're going to do. And prepare has to do with packaging the apps, and the prepare also has uh, to do with trying to automate that as much as possible. But let me tell you why you have such a high compatibility rate with a technology like FlexApp. It's because we use a filter driver that makes the application look like it's installed in the OS. And it resonates with all consistent versions of Windows from Windows 7 forward to find those key locations in Windows that are still leveraged across all those versions to make sure that app will run if the vendor supports it without being installed in the base image. It does this by putting the, 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 the particular app that you are delivering this way, any Windows app, virtually any Windows app, in a VHDX or VMDK container and then leverage in a local filter driver that if a couple things ring true and it says that Jason over in marketing needs this app, that app will appear on the desktop, but it's not there. The filter, the, the file system thinks it's there. All the folders think it's there. If you go looking in there, you'll find that you'll find that there's evidence that it's in there. It looks like it's there. This is not symbolic links. It looks like it's there. It can work with other things like plugins and all that. And you get that very high compatibility rate, but it's not there. They're all untouched. That's what I'm showing on the right side of the screen. All these system files are untouched. If you turn that, that um, app off or deactivate it, they actually disappear. They were never there. They're not deleted. They disappear because the filter driver made them appear. They were there and in the registry to make them work, but they're not there. That's how you end up with clean, clean, clean base images and zero windows rot. So your Windows machine runs just as good as it would without apps. I started to say just as good as it did from day one, but as we know, it seems like Windows runs slower every time it gets a Windows update, but it runs just as good as it would without apps. So it's a different approach to be able to do this and to have consistency to where it'll work across multiple OSs. Johnny, I've been talking for a bit. Do you have anything to add to that? Nothing at the moment. They're just asking if they can get the presentation at the end. The, the folks in that's there. always a good sign <laughs> yeah. maybe it's for the picture of the mandalorian falcon yeah. so um you can package apps easily we're, we're in the prepare okay prepare for your application attachments you can package them package them easily with flex app you take a, a, a any any machine that can be uh reset easily the easiest one to do that's like a vmware workstation um so you can snapshot it back and keep it clean um, we also do some OS cleanup, but you could use VirtualBox and you can use several solutions to set up a packaging console. You just want to have the OS that on average is running to take that variable out. For instance, if it's if it's Windows 10, that would be the OS that you're packaging with. Usually all those apps, like I said, will work backwards and forward from seven forward. So here we have our list of apps in the packaging console. And then if we wanted to create one, we'd click on create and we would see this pop up. And we would see that you put in the package name, that's a free form field. You can put in the version. This is something new in the latest version that we have. So you can add your custom version here. 
in case you had multiple versions of an app, you let you keep track of them for updates, et cetera. And you put in the description, also free form, and the installer location. So you'll point your setup files on your network or wherever that is. And then you choose whether you want it to be a VHDX, which is the default, or a VMDK. We, we prefer VHDX because it's more flexible across and you don't need any VMware infrastructure to do that. And where those VHDXs are going to be held um, somewhere on the network or a cloud file share. And then if you want to be a Flex App 1, truly be able to go offline and be independent and, and have its own filter driver embedded in it, we'll get to that a little later, but that's an extra format there. You check that box and it'll go ahead and render it into this. It's, it's, it's a file I could hand you. I could hand you Camtasia. I could hand you Adobe Creative Suite on a, on a, on a, on a uh, USB stick and you could run it without having anything else. Double click on it and boom, it looks like it's running. It works great. You can deploy it by Microsoft Intune, any means necessary if it's a Flex App 1, but that's where you check that box. You decide how big the, uh, the container can get. It can dynamically grow. Um, it could be expandable rather. And then you hit create and it starts installing the app in this packaging console and capturing it on the VHDX. If it's uh, if it's an easy app, next, next, next and done. If it's something that we have a, a small recipe for, you'll find that on our help desk files, um, but that's easy. So if you got one, two, three, 20 apps, that's easy to use this. If you got more than that, a few dozen or something like that, we've automated the process. No one in the industry has automated the process like we have, end to end. Some, there's, there's one company that claims to have some automation, but you have to, it's attended stuff. This is automation. You go home on a Friday, you set up this infrastructure to have four packaging machines. It points to your setup file and runs through hundreds of, or a thousand applications over the weekend. And you're ready for testing on Monday. That's the output and that's our automation. So you want to automate as much as you can. And that's why we have big fortune 500 customers signing onto the strategy now is because we are solving single base image management from an end to end assessment all the way through your preparing and automation of it and then delivering them as you'll see here. And I'm getting ahead of myself a bit, but the, the packaging uh, is fully automated and it's great for those large enterprise accounts. Then you want to yeah. test. Yep, go a ahead. Few, a few comments in the chat. Thomas put something out there about references for GIS applications. Personally, I've had and done GIS packaging for folks in my patch, my, my territories. So yes, most definitely ArcGIS and the like can be packaged correctly and function correctly with FlexApp. Uh, We've done there was AutoCAD. A, We've done yep. uh, Epic. Revit. Yeah. Uh, we've done the largest of applications. Epic is a monster for healthcare hospitals, and we've done that. And then Rick put something in there. He's currently using Citrix app layering, and the publishing of the image is what takes a long time. Yeah, we, we see that all the time across the board. So, yep. and we, since we don't technically manage the image anymore, we're just delivering applications, you know, delivering applications, making that faster. It's all good. Right. Yeah, we've got an old video out there on YouTube that shows you that process versus Flex App. Not to say we compete against uh, Citrix. You either have app layering or you don't. We encourage you to use it if you want to use it to manage base images, but we're not managing base images. We're only delivering apps. So we're saying keep your base image separate. But Rick, we've seen that too. Um, and I'm not bad mouthing that. It's a good solution. Some of our customers are using it to manage the base image in the OS and then using us to uh, snap in the applications after the fact and keep those elastic. And Jim, your question about GIS apps from Esri, yes, that, that's the ArcGIS and Pro and Desktop and the like, right? Making those app, those applications flex app uh, packaged, essentially, yes. Right. Those are great questions and statements. Appreciate those. Please feel free to uh, ask away. Johnny will chime back in and turn on his camera anytime you see those pop up. Um, we're still in the prepare. We're preparing for production here. Look over at the right, the blue. Um, we're in the prepare phase. This is where you want to do your testing. Now you open the app, close the app, maybe roll it out to a sample size group, let them test it, do some user acceptance testing, UAT as it's called in the industry. Application readiness. Uh, is a vendor that we've partnered with 
that loved what we were doing and they already did some similar things for MSIX and, and some of these other technologies that you see listed here. And they said, you know what? We want to work with FlexApp too. We want to be able to uh, do this process from beginning to end for our customers that are interested in how they should deliver applications. So they've automated the testing of these and they can actually sample the application in different formats. As you see here, don't, don't trust my word for it, but when I got this back from uh, application readiness and that's the name of the company, uh, they have roots back all the way back to change base. If you remember that company um, that, that was bought by Quest Software and then Dell and then is now an independent company again. They tested us and we came out looking great here uh, against many other technologies. Those in the far right are base image, man, our base, our apps in the base of the, he, they call it Zen app still, and RDS. So of course they're gonna work great. And there's a couple of things, that, that nuances for those multi-user environments that might not be ideal over there. But compared to that, we, even compared to that, we have the best compatibility rate, very, very high when it's compared to against these and when you compare it against others. And it's because of that very native approach that we take. Um, so we've done this work with application readiness where they can actually even kick off our automated packaging through an API, API work that they've done. And we're looking forward to rounding this out with Remo3 and others have contacted us in that UAT space. Johnny, looks like you might have another question. Yeah, Travis just brought up the question of running this on persistent machines. Yes, most definitely. We just land our client, our services, our drivers onto persistent machine, non-persistent machine, virtual desktop, cloud desktop, uh, laptop, and physical desktop. It's all good. Once the service lands, the applications, the user environment management, and the like kind of just pop right in there and you're, you're off and you're rolling. You'll see the quick demo I do today on a physical machine. Um, that's on my own physical machine. Um, the deploy phase. So we just switched from, see that blue prepare? We just switched to the deploy phase. So what do we say? Assess, prepare, and now we're in the deploy phase of an application strategy. And you want to, you want to be able to, maybe you wanted to be able to deploy with the tools you have today. And in that case, you want to make sure that there's a checkbox there from any vendor you go with that can actually deploy through Intune or maybe you're an Avanti DSM customer that can deploy that through Avanti DSM. Uh, at least it's an option. And um, as you see here, we have a FlexApp One technology that's a self-contained that we're publishing the, the link to that executable and it's being pushed out by Intune. So we don't have to have our Liquidware console in the mix or any, anything else from FlexApp. We can deploy through third-party solutions. I challenge you to find another technology similar to ours that can do that because you won't find it. Not without having a heavy player on the endpoint. We don't have a heavy player on the endpoint. We have a single filter driver service that'll make it ring true. So now we're compatible with, maybe you've standardized on the Intune. So we can do that with the FlexApp One version of our technology. Speaking of FlexApp One, and this is where I was gonna show you the demo. And I could show you a live demo, but this is my machine that I recorded. Now it's been a, a minute or two or, or a, a bit since I actually recorded this demo, but um, I'm gonna walk you through this because it's easier for me to play the recording and tell you what I did. than it is for me to click here and click there. So um, what I've got is I've got several FlexApp ones in my environment. Now these were not published by my uh, application deployment uh, administrator. I have them locally. This shows you the power of FlexApp One because you can do that extra render and, and convert it into a very portable file that can be deployed through Intune. And that's what you're seeing here. All these are individual and no architecture involved. They have the embedded filter driver. Look close right here. That's the filter driver that's not yet on this machine. Now it's on the machine. You could pre-populate that and already have it out there so you didn't need the admin privileges if it was a VDI environment or, or other. And when I tried to launch Camtasia, it asked me that one question and all of a sudden Camtasia launches. It launches quick as that. There was no install process or anything. It looks very native to the environment. If I go look in where TechSmith, the vendor for Camtasia has put files, they'll be all over the system. That gives you the, that great high compatibility rate. Now I could hand you 
maybe not legally if you're not licensed for it, but I could hand you a thumb drive that had this on it and you could double click and launch it too. It's that portable. You could put it in the Intune, you could launch it that way. And we're working on some other ways that you can launch it in Citrix environments that I think you'll be impressed with later this year, but uh, can't say much more about that right now, but you can you can deploy by any means. And that's that's the use case with that one right there. And with Adobe here, We've just launched the full creative suite. You didn't see anything about a filter driver or anything being able to, because the second time you run a package, filter driver's already there. I'm going to run the script that's going to execute all those packages. It's going to put them all in the environment. I could have double clicked on all of them, but I ran a script to save a second or two. And now they're all in the start menu. Wherever I package that app as the administrator is where it's going to show up. Adobe Creative Suite's in here, and you've got... Uh, Inkscape and all the others. I'm launching Photoshop, which you probably realize is a very large file, and that's the performance that you get. There's no smoke and mirrors in that. That's the actual launch time that it took. Uh, Inkscape's in here as well, as I said, and a few others. Now, what you're going to see in a minute is that I'm also going to go over to the Add Remove Programs area of Windows, and I'm going to show you that even the OS thinks that all these apps are installed in the environment, even though they're not. See, they show up even there. That's the, that's the high degree of compatibility we have. And that's why plugins, services, drivers, all complicated apps virtually will work with this technology. And I'm gonna show you one final thing in here in the demo is that, uh, when these applications install Creative Suite from Adobe, and it, it has thousands of entries in the file system and registry when you think about it that way. And you see the Adobe file here, and I'll open it up and I'll look in it in a minute if I don't look at the other one first. Uh, TechSmith, Camtasia is the same thing. But Adobe, open it up, and you'll see that there's hundreds, if not thousands of files that they look like they're there, don't they? But I want you to keep a close watch on the Adobe folder. When I go back up here, the Adobe folder is highlighted. When I stop this application, and with FlexApp 1, you can stop my application. Look at Adobe. It's gone. It was never there. You never tattooed the OS. You never caused Windows rot. You kept a single base image. You delivered an app. And in this case, what was it? About 10 apps without modifying the base image at all. So you can see Flex App, that was Flex App 1. And those containers can go offline just like they were in this demo in a physical environment. So that's a, pers that's a non-persistent, no, it's a persistent environment. But they're coming back anytime I want them to. Um, you're keeping base image light no matter how you do it. So Flex App 1 is very portable apps that can be deployed through any means. It's just an extra render as you saw in our packaging console. It's a little checkbox that puts the filter driver in the v, VMDK to where it can be portable and deployed by any means necessary. And FlexApp is more of an online type of solution for VDI, for example, for Microsoft AVD, for multi-session environments that are connected. So you can keep those containers in the cloud. You can manage it a little tighter. You can run an inventory at any time. And when we do that, that goes with our liquidware Profile Unity console to help manage all that. You'll see that Flex App up top here is how we're doing that with traditional Flex App. And you can deploy these on a context aware basis. That's what we mean by filter management over here. And what I want to share with you is that Profile Unity doesn't stop there. With the most recent release a couple months ago, we are really full blown application management now. If you got MSI X apps that you want to deploy on a context aware basis, we can do that too. You got App V apps you want to do. You can do that here. Um, Amazon AppStream apps, we can help manage that process as well. If you want to put things in the base image and cloak them away, yeah, cloaking you can get from Microsoft and I think Citrix is actually doing it now, but we can do it in the central console on a context aware basis with our application restrictions. If you want to raise the privilege for a certain application for a group of users, you can do that over here. If you want to change the file extension to one app versus the other for how that's associated, you can do that there. If you want to do a registry fix up, that's there too. So you can see that the 
yeah, I told you about Flex App one today, and that was impressive. But when you roll out full Flex App, you get the power with Profile Unity, you get the full power of application management being centralized under one umbrella here. So we give you the option. You can use Intune with Flex App one formats. Um, if you want to and have more power, you come back under the Liquidware umbrella with our management console, and you can manage everything, including SaaS applications. Now, we talked about three types of applications, didn't we? We talked about those in the base image, those that can be attached, and those that are isolated. But there's a fourth, I would argue, SaaS applications need to be assigned to, so we can do shortcuts to the desktop, salesforce.com, for example, or anything like that on a context-aware basis. And it's easy to do all under one console. So if you thought Profile Unity did profiles only, you can see that it's far more than that, full user environment management. So we talked about the problem today. We started off with why you need an application strategy to get down to a single base image. And, and we've got this top part of the graph uh, of this picture that looked like it did, these sprawling base images. And you all have testified that the majority of people in here, I think, had more than six base images. So that's, that we have six up here. So mo most of you, or nearly half of you, had at least that many, maybe 20. And there's many organizations that we get down to very few base images and some as low as one, like we do in the bottom here, half here, where applications are dynamically assigned and maybe not just from FlexApp, but maybe from AppVert too, and maybe some in the base image. And you get down to that one base image like Joe Shunk was able to do one of his healthcare customers. And you're in a much better world for managing that base image you have to have fewer servers running. You have to have fewer replicated for each group. You can now use maybe as perhaps one base image for all your servers where you're running CVAD and for all your desktops across the board. So I'm going to recap. Uh, Johnny, you got a, something came in? Yeah, someone asked about using Profile Unity to change the default browser for sessions. They want to change the default browser from like Edge to Chrome or Chrome to Edge or yeah. Firefox or the like. Uh, I think we can do that as a registry setting, can't we? Yes, yes, that should be pushable as a registry setting. As a registry setting. A, it can be retained as well. Yep. And when we, when we do things in our registry settings, we run with HKLM type privileges. So we can do things a standard user can't do. We can keep a desktop secure and force that, in this case, probably a, uh, the choice of uh, browsers in there. And uh, then the user can't undo that. If they can, maybe they can undo it only for the session. It'll be reset at the next reboot. So yeah, that was a great question and a great time for me to talk about how we run with admin high-level privileges when we assign things to a desktop. So we secure them, too. We can lock down desktops, um, lock down USB hide control panels, do things that users can undo. Recap application strategy and how the fourth can be with you is assess. And you can do that with Liquidware. I stayed generic through that. You know, there's other tools that you could use the same strategy if you didn't want to sign a PO today from us. I wish you did, but um, you can use a lot of things in the industry to do this type of methodology. This, I think it's a good time to think about adopting a methodology like this for your next project. Assess, and in our case, we use Stratosphere to do to figure out which applications actually were even in use. So now we had a short list. We figured out application complexity, so we can start to categorize apps by one of three types, four if you count SaaS, those in the base image, those that are virtualized, if any, and those that are just simply attached. And then those with SAS. Um, prepare uh, you, how you package those things and how you can automate them. There's, there's perhaps you will find some partial automation in the industry, but we have pushed the limits on that and have done it. And just because something fails, a package fails under our automation, doesn't mean it can't be packaged. It means we might have a recipe for it. You need to check with us or with the uh, system engineer that you're working with or the support group that you're working with that we can get as many packages as possible. And then to deploy that through any means necessary or through your whatever you desire or through the power of something else uh, like Profile Unity that I showed you today. 
so you can take care of all use cases, cloaking, restrictions, everything from one central console. Is it time to give away that Mandalorian Falcon or do we have more questions? So as we, there's another question that popped up again, talking about FlexApp packaging running isolated from the hosts. So basically, long story short, the applications appear native. There's no full isolation. So if I have Java trying to step on Java, Office trying to step on Office, they will most definitely stop on each other and we don't isolate each other from that because we're not doing a full isolation. That's a case where I would encourage you to look at MSIX to see if the new emerging formats can help there. Are the new versions of those there? Um, or AppV, and AppV will still be with us for the next uh, few years. That's all the questions that I see so far. Great. Well, I enjoyed this, um, and uh, I hope I hope that you got something out of it. If it and, then, and I hope it wasn't a, a, just a blatant commercial for liquidware. I hope that uh, it helps you with your application strategy. And uh, if there's anything that we can help you with, you can evaluate our products even this afternoon. You can go out there and fill out a form and you can be downloading. You don't have to wait for a sales rep. You can, uh, you can actually download and try it today. And um, if you want to see a, if you want to test a Plex app package out, you can email me directly and I'll, I'll put a package up in the cloud and you can double click on it and open it. So my email is jason.smith at liquidware.com. Just let me know and I'll put something out there on OneDrive and share it out, download it, and double click and see it run for yourself. Stephanie? I'm here. <laughs> Don't you love it when you do these webinars with Liquidware? <laughs> you guys are awesome. I never have to worry about y'all. That's what I love. <laughs> We appreciate the CUGC community. We do. Yeah, and we appreciate you guys it's been with us from the start, and I love um, having you guys around. And I like doing these webinars with y'all. <laughs> um, all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to download the registration report. I'm going to use the number randomizer to do its magic and randomly pick a winner. And then I will send out an email to that person. So be on the lookout for an email from me, to let you know that you won. <laughs> um, all right, and if that's it, I guess we can wrap up. I see like, Johnny, there is one. Oh, you're typing an answer. I can see you doing it. <laughs> all right, well, thanks to all of you. Um, like I said earlier, you're gonna get an email from me tomorrow with a link to the recording. And um, if there's any resources, uh, Jason, that you want to share, just send them to me and I'll include those in the email. I know we had to ask for the slide deck too, so I can put that together. That's great. It. I'll get you a PDF version shortly. Thank you. All right. Well, thanks everyone. Right. Hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, Johnny. Thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Have a good day. Bye. Talk to you. Bye. May the fourth be with you. <laughs>